going to kick off uh, basically with a keynote from someone who I really, really appreciate in the online world. As someone who I met for the first time a couple of years ago at VidCon and I just fell in love with her right away. And then we met and we were trying to work it out. We were like, when was the last time? I think it was 2014 on a music video shoot about a librarian who was trying to hunt uh, an, a, a fee, basically, from a late fee from a book that had been taken out five years ago and the guy owed him like a million euro or something like that. So that's how random uh, of a situation was the last time we met each other in. But uh, I've followed her online ever since and everything she's done, pretty much in terms of her own story, but in engaging with other people and being able to make people feel, we're going to talk about this later, but being able to uh, make people all around the world feel a little bit less alone is pretty, pretty incredible. Her name is Becky Brown. She's documented her online, her life online since she was 12 years old. Um, she's going to speak both about the positives and negatives of growing up online. And uh, then we're going to have a panel discussion as well, opening up the topic to some of the common concerns that young people face while living their lives so publicly. Um, so yeah, she's a mental health advocate, one of the world's longest running vloggers as well, which is crazy to think about. I started 12 years ago, it's not just a new thing. Jake Paul didn't start it or none of them started it, thank God. But thousands of people followed her life growing up, seeing her struggle with uh, trichotillomania, anxiety and depression. Becky's going to speak about the positives and negatives of sharing her formative years with the world. Please give her a massive round of applause. a wonderful introduction, so thank you ever so much. Um, so hello, um, I'll probably just repeat just a few basic things. Uh, my name is Rebecca Jane Brown, but lots of the internet know me as uh, Becky J. Brown. Um, going back 10 years ago, uh, before social media really kicked off, um, there was other websites like Bebo, Pixo, um, and usernames were more the thing. So my username for the first 10 years of my social media career career was Becky with a zero at the end, so some of you might know me as that. Um, he mentioned that um, I do lots of mental health awareness, I talk about depression, trichotillomania, anxiety, and uh, some of you may be able to tell, you might not, but I'm currently shaking to the high heavens. Um, I'm one of those people that um, I'm able to talk to a camera, I open up more when I'm in my own space, whereas put me in front of a room like this, and I'm absolutely terrified. Uh, if any of you guys are terrified of public speaking or anything like that, practice makes perfect. Ten years ago I wouldn't have dreamt about doing something like this. Right, let's just get my notes. As a vlogger, always have vlog notes. Um, so yeah, let's go through. So, big general talk about the last ten years or so. So, go back 12 years, uh, when YouTube was just starting, it was one of those things that everyone hated and You'd get bullied for doing YouTube, it was an unpopular sort of thing, um, and it was an entirely different world to what it is now. So it was more for the introverts, uh, for the anxious people uh, like myself, it was a way to escape. For me it was more about sharing video diaries, uh, which is sort of what video blogging was, or vlogging as it's now called, uh, was for lots of us. Um, and it was not as popular, uh, not as widespread, so audiences were a lot smaller, they were more interactive, and it was just the perfect space for myself and thousands of others to sort of open up in a way that we couldn't do in our offline world. Uh, nowadays it's, yeah, it's extremely oversaturated and every personality you can imagine is on the platform, but ten years ago it was quite different. So that sort of environment gave me a space to uh, express myself and uh, over a couple of years or so I garnered a pretty big audience which was fantastic. Uh, tons of supportive people my age uh, from all over the world uh, but then it got to a point when I, I knew I already had a disorder but it was becoming very obvious. Uh, I have several disorders but one of them is called trichotillomania. Stephen did a pretty good job pronouncing it but to summarise it's a little bit like OCD and, and ICD. Uh, it's a disorder where you tear your hair out compulsively. Um, so as a blogger, 
Appearance isn't everything, but over a period of time, I was losing my hair in my videos, and lots of people thought I had cancer, uh, which is uh, very tough to, tough to explain. So I made a big video explaining what the disorder was, and for its time, it went viral. Um, probably not the same sort of numbers that you'd associate with viral videos now, but it was seen worldwide, hundreds of thousands of people tuned in. And it was like a, a stepping stone for both myself and tons of people with the disorder. So after that, I, uh, started, meet, I started talking with people online from all over the world and doing more talks about trichotillomania and then depression. Um, so having spoken online, it then got me in contact with uh, television companies and mental health charities such as Mind. Uh, it's uh, back in the UK, but it's, it's quite a big charity associated with mental health. Um, so having, if I hadn't have spoken online in the first place, I wouldn't have had those, those sorts of opportunities. Um, so trichotillomania was sort of my starting point, the, the big thing I opened up on. But as time went on, I started talking about depression, uh, and more recently, I guess, anxiety. Uh, and because I've been talking so long online, there's so much of my life online uh, through good and bad periods. And this is what sort of leads me to the negatives. So having been so open about my lowest moments, um, it's made me more vulnerable. Um, sharing when you're at your lowest, it, you're not as presentable, uh, you don't necessarily think things through. Uh, and I, I found it quite difficult how stuff I said when I was extremely upset, like more than 10 years ago, is still accessible. And I don't really believe it's a representation of what I am now. Not that I regret my past at all, but it's something, it's something we're all sort of taught that whatever you show online stays online, and uh, that definitely applies to myself. I sort of, I, I've learned over time to not necessarily censor myself, but share a little bit less or delay sharing how I feel um, or the things I'm fighting. Um, another thing that's been quite tough over the years is having been so open about the things I've been through. Um, in the last few years, as I said, I've sort of stepped back just a little bit. Um, it's, the, the pressure to continue sharing has been quite hard to, to fight. Um, so back in 2017, I had a really difficult time uh, with the mental health services back in the UK, and I was diagnosed with a couple of different things. And for the first time in my entire online I don't know, career, essentially, I decided not to share the things I've been diagnosed with, and I still haven't shared. And uh, that, that pressure to open up and continue being an open book was, was tough. Still a bit tough. Um, but yeah, that's another, another big negative. I guess just jumping in, no matter what you share online, know that you don't have to continue sharing. Never feel like you're a burden to your followers um, to con continue being open. Only share what you're comfortable with. Um, that's a big, big point. Um, the next two big negatives, I will try not to go in too much depth, um, but over, over the last 10 years, I feel that, um, I guess, I've become more resilient uh, at, uh, at fighting bullies and harassment online. Uh, I guess everybody here has dealt with some form of bullying or harassment of some kind online. But uh, no, for, for myself, um, we get, myself and other YouTubers and social media influencers online, we can have tens of thousands of hate comments a year. And after a while, it sort of, it gets to your brain. You sort of say to yourself, nah, it won't, I won't take it seriously. Um, they're just haters, they're people I don't know, it won't matter. But after a while, it, it can sort of penetrate your brain. And over time, I've sort of learned to block it out. There are still times where I do take it a bit too seriously. Uh, I'm, I'm still sort of learning how to block it out. Um, but going one step further, sharing online um, or just having profiles online in general can um, make you more vulnerable. So not just bullies, but people can harass you online. They can find out uh, your details, like where you live or where you go to school. Um, so in my case, I've had a number of stalkers who have harassed me over the years. Um, 
and the majority of them have been online. Uh, so nothing in person, which is something we were never taught about at school. Uh, when I was a kid, they would say things like, don't, don't talk to strangers. If someone approaches you, walk away. No one ever prepared me for uh, the things I face online. So I'd open up emails and there'd be threats, like death threats or acid attacks. Um, people would find out where I was going to be and say, hey, we've got a bottle of acid on standby, we're going to throw it in your face, which was pretty terrifying. Um, so that in itself has been super difficult. Um, but one thing I've learned is that you just have to put on a happy face, sort of hide how it affects you, because the more you share about how it's affecting you, the worse it gets. Um, and of course, go to the police and document everything. Um, so that's been pretty tough. Right, those are my negatives. Pretty severe, I suppose. Uh, let's talk about positives. So despite the fact there's been lots of negatives to sharing, the positives have been overwhelming. I mean, the, the, the biggest thing for me has been sharing my disorder. It's not only um, enabled me to feel less alone, but I've been able to connect to millions and millions of people worldwide. So, for example, um, a, a news station in Australia got in contact with me a couple of years ago, invited me on the show, and they said that what I was doing went out to 8 million people. 8 million people. So that morning when I was saying, hey, I have trichotillomania, uh, technically I educated 8 million more people on what the disorder was. That was mind-blowing for me. Um, and despite the fact that YouTube and video creation and things like that have changed over time, um, it's no longer just being in my bedroom and, and talking to myself. Uh, it's enabled me to come to events like this and talk to people like you and get engaged with companies and organisations such as Mental Health Charity Mind and uh, Childline and uh, speak on things like ITV. So that sort of connection has been awesome. I would not have had that at all. Um, I think the biggest thing for me has been the, the way I've been able to make change and connect with other people, um, posting videos and posts and things like that, it's just been, like even now, every time I post something it can go out to, I don't know, 30,000 people, uh, which after 12 years is, is I, I feel is pretty cool. Um, I'd say that if you are somebody out there that is um, wanting to say something, say it. Go for it. Whatever you've got inside of you, share. Um, you've no idea the potential, what, what you could do with what you're saying online. I think the biggest thing is um, with sharing online, no matter what you do, be responsible and think ahead. Uh, if you are somebody that is struggling in one way, shape or form, um, you can share what you're going through, um, but sometimes um, maybe delay what you're going through. Wait a couple of hours. Because uh, those couple of hours, you may change your perspective on what you're going through. Um, the internet is such a fantastic medium to reach out and communicate. And uh, no, I really, I, despite the negatives, I mean, the positives have been fantastic. I do recommend you use it to the best of your ability. Um, so yeah, thank you. Hope it's been all right. <laughs>